Hi, Stuart Siegel, the CEO of AELP. Um, at today's conference, we've launched our uh, most recent manifesto of ideas and recommendations about what this government and any future governments can do to improve the skills and employment sector that we are working in at the moment. Um, clearly what's great is that everybody, all political parties, see skills as an important part of driving economic development and our manifesto gives a number of ideas and recommendations that we think can really help take that forward. Um, the manifesto covers a number of areas ranging all the way from uh, vocational and careers education in schools all the way through the transition of, into work, through traineeships and study programmes, through to a very important programme of apprenticeships, which for us now is important to maintain as an all age, all sector and all level programme, which underpins the whole of workforce development. Uh, we're already beginning to see some skill shortages in our economy and apprenticeships uh, backed up by traineeships will be the programme that makes sure that everybody has an opportunity to contribute, everybody can get the opportunity to have a job and everybody has an opportunity to progress in work. Clearly there are a number of reforms on the table uh, for apprenticeships. We support the principles of the reform in terms of getting more employers engaged, uh, getting more contributions and investment from employers. All we would say is we need to make sure that that's an employer choice, that employers have different ways of making a contribution. And therefore we've always said from the beginning that mandatory cash contributions is not the way to go. Uh, particularly for small businesses, this will become a barrier both in terms of the way that that's administered and the, and, and, and the controls that we'd have to put in place around that. But we do want, every training provider works very hard to make sure that employers are engaged and making contributions in all sorts of ways, uh, from paying the wages through to providing training, providing mentoring on the job, uh, not just cash contributions. So we think the government is beginning to listen to that argument. They do need to listen to employers and give employers that choice. Yeah, similarly, I think what we've seen that the focus on English and maths is something that we've been talking about for many years. So we agree with that principle. And many young people have failed by the school system and don't have the basic English and maths. But what we're absolutely sure about is that just putting them through GCSEs time and time again is not the way forward. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a strong product, functional skills, um, that's only been around for a couple of years. It is building in terms of its recognition and brand recognition, but there are things that we can do to make sure that functional skills is a real alternative to GCSEs. I think skills is something that all political part, uh, parties see as an important part of economic development, which is great. Uh, and perhaps even more so, apprenticeships as the underpinning program that will support that. Um, uh, and therefore it was good to see all of the political parties supporting apprenticeships, saying that we need more of them. Uh, but it's important that it doesn't become just a numbers game. Uh, it's not a question of outbidding each other in terms of how many apprenticeships we can live. It's all about making sure this is a high quality program. Uh, and the other thing is, the other temptation I began to see at the conferences was that, you know, the focus on the higher apprenticeships. But although that is important, clearly it's important, we mustn't in any way, shape or form take away those bottom rungs of the ladders, those core entry into employment apprenticeships at level two, which are so important to, to pull people through, to give people an opportunity to get the those higher level apprenticeships. So it is a balance between maintaining the focus on entry level apprenticeships, as well as bringing uh, in newer and high, higher level apprenticeships in, in, in across all sectors.
Uh, on traineeships, which has come up today as a very important part uh, of the skills uh, environment, um, we do believe it's a, a program that gives flexibility for training providers to deliver a really good program. We've got to look at though the eligibility rules around it and in particular the numbers of training providers who can deliver it. Uh, when it was introduced we look, um, the government introduced a requirement that only uh, grade 2 Ofsted providers could deliver that. I think we need to look at that again. Many providers who aren't grade 2 may be sometimes because they haven't had a grade given yet, they haven't had an inspection or perhaps um, they've got an inspection that's a long time outstanding that maybe at level three but there's good evidence that they can deliver high quality employability programs and I think we need to look at other evidence as well as the Ofsted grade level two that would enable more trained providers to get involved and frankly bring their employers who they're already working with into the system. So that's something I think we should look at very quickly.